Great. All right. Um, that is just so we make sure that we record this. Um, so these are the Monday morning Kickstarters or Monday afternoon Kickstarters. If you haven't been here before, these um, are practice sessions based on our book, Conversations Worth Having. Um, and you can go on the website and, and find out more about it if you haven't read the book. Um, but what we're gonna be doing is practicing the two simple practices that are part of Conversations Worth Having. The first one is generative questions. Second is positive framing. And when you use those two practices, you can have a, a, a conversation worth having no matter what's going on anywhere, anytime. So the way this is gonna work in the chat box, you'll type in an issue or a situation that is challenging for you or a conversation you're like, how do I have a conversation about this? Or I'm way back here in protect and I need to figure out how can I have a conversation worth having? So people will type those in. If you have one, type them into chat. And then we will choose one of those and we're going to do the flip on it. If it's not already a flip or a positive frame, we're gonna create a positive frame for the conversation. So naming it, that's the challenge, we'll choose one. And the first thing we'll do is in the chat box, people will have an opportunity to flip it. Now, let me give you an example. For instance, if somebody said um, the challenge is um, around our office, we have high turnover, people aren't showing up for work, um, we've got to talk about this and fix the problem. So the first thing you would do is flip it. That's just the positive opposite. So the positive opposite is um, people are showing up for work and, um, You've either got low, low turnover or retention. The second thing we're gonna do is create a positive frame. So instead of just talking about retention, um, what we're gonna look at what's the outcome we're looking for. Um, if, if we have high retention, if people are showing up for work, what might be the conversation that we could have that would help us figure out how to make that happen? For example, it might be, we're going to frame this conversation around being here and loving it. And then we're going to go to the whiteboard, if you have access to the whiteboard. Um, and you can then add generative questions to help us learn and have a conversation around the positive frame. Um, when you go into whiteboard, it'll come up on the screen at the top. There will be a, um, a menu click on view options, which is all the way over on the right. The drop down menu, you'll see annotate, click on annotate, then click on format, choose whatever color you want um, and set your font to 14. Um, and then all you need to do is click on the T which gives you a text box and you can type in the text box. And then if you want to know what questions are really resonating, if you want to share that, you can click on the stamp in your toolbar and it gives you a heart or a star and you can put that by the questions. If you don't have access to this um, whiteboard, if you're on a phone, you won't. So you can type it into, type your generative question into chat and we'll, um, we'll move it in there for you. So a generative question helps you shift your thinking, feeling, or the possibilities. What are you curious about? Think about the frame. What don't you know? What aren't you sure of? Or what questions might help us move towards that frame? And then you'll just type it into the whiteboard. So let's get started. Um, whoever has an issue, problem, challenge, a question about how do I have this conversation, type it into the chat box. And Sherry, we already have one in there. Brian, who's, who's a returnee, said, my situation is a work partner blamed me for not respecting her in your power place. So Brian, you got that in early. You know where, where we're going here, but the rest of you can still type in some issues, but we'll launch um, with Brian's um, issue. And Jackie, can you say again, it's a work partner blamed me 
for not respecting her and using power plays. And Jackie, could you please post those three questions that we need to think about? The problem, the flipping it, and then the third one, I'm forgetting what it was. Framing. Framing, okay. Yeah, so if we're, and we're gonna just do flip it first, and then we'll do frame afterwards. Um, so it'll give, give the, the, and the reason we do that is it's usually pretty straightforward what the positive opposite is, but the frame, there can be lots of different possibilities for the frame. And so we'll let. I am typing those in for you right now, Brian. Thank you. Um, and Brian, this is yours, correct? Yes. Okay, so as you look through um, the positive opposite, once we start working on this, you look through and say which one you feel most closely might be the positive opposite. Um, so so let's, let's use Brian's work partner blamed me for not respecting her and using power plays. Um, what is the positive opposite of that if we're having a conversation? What's the and the positive opposite is pretty simple. It's just the positive opposite. That I was respecting her and trying to work collaboratively. Okay, so that's that is. Um, so we, if we want, we need the work partner in there. So does the work partner realize um, felt respected? Okay, can you say say one more time? Um, what's the positive opposite? Work. The yeah. work partner felt respected and thought that we were working collaboratively. Perfect, great. And then those were, somebody also typed in that. So that's great. So we've got the positive opposite. Okay. And now what might your frame for the conversation be? So anybody can type in a frame to help Brian out. Um, and then Brian, you may come up with a frame just by now seeing the flip it. What's the frame that if the positive opposite was true, what would you really, what would really be going on? What do you really want to have a conversation about? Yeah, what's the, what's the conversation you want to have that'll move you forward? would have to do with um, give and take and listening and hearing. Um, that you say what's true for you and I'll say what's true for me and then we'll try and find the truth that each other has that we have in common. I feel like I'm out on a limb with this reframing because it's just not innate for me today. All right, let's let's um, let's see if there are any others that people now that you've, you've kind of heard what Brian's wanting to talk about. Are there any other frames that people can think of? And if you'll put those in the chat, we're going to put on the whiteboard. We're going to put our questions. So in the chat. My work partner and I are able to have collaborative dialogue that improves our partnership. Is Brian. there a frame in there resonating with you, um, Brian? Um. My work partner and I know what it looks like when we are work collaboratively so we feel heard. My work partner and I are able to have productive conflict to move us to high performance. I like Sue Baldwin's contribution. My work partner and I know what it looks like when we work collaboratively so we feel heard and respected. All That's right. a beautiful, beautiful one, Sue.
All right. So um, if everybody will move to the to the whiteboard now, now you um, click those text boxes and and uh, and add questions. And remember, your questions are to help you discover how you can move towards this positive frame. What, what, what are you curious about when you think, my work partner and I know what it looks like when we work collaboratively so we feel heard and respected. What kinds of questions might you start this conversation off with with your work partner? And if you're having a problem typing on the whiteboard, I will pull your questions um, into the whiteboard for you. Anna, I will grab. So Brian, as you, as you look at these that are up here, do any of them feel like, oh, that's a question that I could ask that I'd really like to know the answer to? I love that question that says, uh, will you share a time when you felt heard and respected when we worked together? Which could also, once she shares that, easily be followed up with, what was it that, that helped you feel that way? Mm-hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, can you describe a time when you worked collaboratively with another colleague? Um, and be, because you're, you are, um, you're talking with your partner, this, the question that says, can you, um, can you describe a time when you've worked collaboratively with another colleague? I would start first by asking, can you describe a time when we worked collaboratively together? And if she can't, then I would move to that question so that it's more mm -hmm. about the two of you. Um, what mindset do I need? That's a great question. Get your place, self in a place of... Um, yeah, some of these are self questions and some of these are other questions with them. And when you have these menu of questions, you can begin to prioritize what feels best to you, the best way to start asking these questions. This is so helpful, you guys. Thank you so much. You are most welcome. So if you want to save this yourself, um, up on your toolbar there, you'll see a save with an arrow pointing down. Okay. And you can, you can click there and save it. We, are, we will also be saving all of these um, and creating a document that we'll send out to you after the um, session is over. Okay, so um, Sherry, I'm gonna put um, the next problem in the ch chat box so you can easily see it. I kind of scrolled through and grabbed it. It's from our very own Dr. Suzette Brown. And she listed the problem about parent conferences are negative, lots of finger pointing due to virtual learning, changing policies, parents, students, feeling overwhelmed. So parent conferences are negative. What is the positive opposite? In the chat box, type in the positive opposite. Remember, the positive op is, opposite is really pretty simple. It's just the positive opposite that you're struggling with it. 
So Suzette, what any of those positive opposites resonating with you? Um, yeah, a couple, well, they're scrolling really fast now, but the, I like the positive and or productive parent conferences because um, we we just want to move the student forward and grow. So if we can do that and make sure everybody's on board and supportive, that's kind of what I'm looking for, so. So. Uh, parent yeah, yeah, parent conferences are positive and engaged by both parties. I like that one. There was one earlier I saw similar to that. How about if you just um, say what the positive opposite is and I will type it. That way you can blend some if you want to. Okay, mutually supportive parent-teacher conversations about student engaged or student performance. Mutually supportive parent conversations. Say the end part of that again. Um, about student performance. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, and is that um, is that your positive frame or is that the positive opposite? Shoot. Um, I thought we had said for the positive opposite, just positive, productive parent conferences. Okay. So mutually supportive conversations with parents about student performance. All right. So time to move to the whiteboard and ask generative questions. And generative questions are gonna help us figure out how we create mutually supportive conversations with parents about their child's performance. And I'd like it from both sides. I'm a parent and a teacher, but I was writing this as if I was a teacher participating in these conferences and it was like, ah! So give me all of it. <laughs> okay, great. So. So questions for parents and teachers? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Great. How can the school be more open to parent concerns hmm, without feeling defensive? So there's an assumption in that question. I'm not sure who typed that in. And the question says, how can the school be more open to parent concerns without feeling defensive? Mm -hmm. um, there's an assumption in that question. And a, a generative question would be one that is completely curious without the, without the loaded assumptions. So I wonder if... Um, might be helpful. Um, what was happening when there was a measure of agreement with these parents? I'm gonna. I'm going over to the chat and putting some things in here that I see questions. So, I'm trying to get your questions into the chat. Those of you in the Thanks chat, around. Hi, Sherry. I'm the one. Uh, this is Marty. I'm the one who wrote. How can the school be more open to parent concerns without feeling defensive? And you said um, that we need to take the assumption out of there. And I wonder if you could give more of an example than just, I wonder if. Um, I, oh, sorry, okay. <laughs> I guess I'm, I'm, it's that mindset pe thing that someone had earlier in the other one. I'm, that's what I'm trying to figure out is, because if we can be, as educators, be open to hearing what people say, then we won't be defensive and not be able to hear what they're at. at what right, they're so we might ask a question that says, um, when are we able to be most open to parent concerns? Or when have you specifically been most open to parent concerns? What was going on? How was it that you stayed connected to the parent and able to listen 
even if you were being blamed and finger pointed. Um, Lots of questions, Suzette. How are you feeling right now? Anyone else? Any last minute ones? Somebody started, what does your student? Cindy, you want to add anything to that? Vicki, I'm going to grab what's in the chat, your question, and put it in there. How's that menu looking, Suzette? I'm loving it. I've, I'm seeing some good stuff. I was the one putting the little hearts all around because <laughs> I, I was losing them. Um, this gives me a good perspective. And I like the fact that some people were thinking how we even set up parent conferences. Sometimes we go into it with the negative mindset that, oh, this is going to be a drudgery or we're going to talk about the 52 percent. But framing it, you know, what is going well? How are you feeling about virtual learning? And then migrate to what can we do to, you know, get these grades up or continue to be supportive. So um, thank you all for that. Wow, lots of questions. Right. Yeah. All right, if you want to save this, um, you can click on save up in that upper right hand corner. Carrie, we're going to save that and I'm going to put in there's one more scenario. I think we have time for just one more. All right. And, Anna, it's kind of a long one. So you want to um, Go to chat and I got to grab it again. Okay. okay. Grab it. I'm scrolling back up into the chat. I'm a slow poke here, but um, it's a little bit of this, a little bit larger scenario, but let's see. It's not about schools. Hold on. It's not wanting to come with me. Give me one more second. That's it's Anna's. Anna's hold on. Is it my organization is preparing for a software deployment? Yep, yeah. I just put it in the chat. My organization is preparing for a software deployment. So if you okay. can pull it over. And if you want to un unmute yourself, Anna, a little bit. Yes, I did. Um, yes, I did. So the, 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 the issue that is that <clears throat> because of the past experiences or similar projects where the, any software would be deployed, there was a lot of uh, negative experiences and people view this kind of change very negatively and they tend to fall into a blaming mindset right away um, uh, and I'm trying to reframe it for them at every meeting um, and and trying to shift their mentality from okay we're deploying a software it's going to be uh, hurtful again to we're trying to recreate our work environment so it's 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 more pleasurable for us to work and that's why we need the software but I would like your ideas, some ideas or some help on that from you guys. <laughs> How else I can do it? Um, and I'm sure. on a change the consultant all there. So, and I'm trying to do some appreciative inquiry with them without naming it. And it's very hard. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So what, what's the positive opposite? Let's just speak that out loud. What's the positive opposite? We're excited about the new software. What is it, Anna? Well, people can collaborate easily. People can spend less time, less time exchanging files. Uh, it's just more productive environment that makes so, work okay. easier and faster. That's okay. how I view it. So Anna, um, if you're just flipping the problem, which is the past experience with this kind of change is very negative. People are afraid and resist. What would the positive opposite be? People are engaged in the process of getting a new software. Okay, keep it just the positive opposite instead of reframing it. Um, people are excited and willing to get the software installed. Okay, and there's a there's kind of a, a, a method. It sounds like why do we have to go through that. Um, but if you do the positive opposite, and then begin to look at so if people were excited and willing to get the software in, involved, 
what would be the outcome? And that could give you a whole different focus for the conversation. Mm -hmm. So okay. if people were excited and willing to get the software installed, what outcomes, and you started to list some of those already. Mm -hmm. Jennifer, those are gr that's great. People are excited, anticipating new software. Um, they're willing to learn and go through the training. I think they're willing to support each other and help each other. So, so what might be the positive frame? People go ahead and type it into the um, chat, your ideas. Jackie's gonna be leaving us. She's got to pop off very shortly. We have a more collaborative work environment, Cindy said. Any other ideas for what the, the positive frame might be? Um, so that says we have buy-in from all and software deployment is successful. Somebody said satisfying and productive work environment. Um, so Anna, which one of these feels as people got successful implementation of the new software Michael offers? Um, a more productive uh, I, and- I like the buy-ins part, buy-in part, and also uh, efficient and, and um, efficient, um, uh, productive and collaborative environment. So I like that I like that loving continuous change because <laughs> I like that one. So um, we have full buy-in and are now more. I would even say that we are co-creating the new productive environment on top of the buy-in, you know. Sorry, co-creating. Thank you so much, everybody. I'm still reading everything through in the chat. All right, so let's, um, let's flip since this is the frame you've chosen. Let's go to questions. What questions, um, if this is the frame now. We have full buy-in and we are co-creating our new environment, loving continuous change. How quickly in these last minutes, any questions you can think of? We have when when have we been successful in change implementation? What worked? What did we learn? Based on your experiences with new implementations, what would make this new digitization program successful? When we successfully implemented a new software before and had buy-in, what were we doing? What needs to happen for us to gain full buy-in, co-create the new environment? Um, <clears throat> You might even ask something like, um, yes, if you were excited about this change, what would be different? Mm -hmm. um, yes, there was, uh, I have to go back to my email. I'm going to go back to my email so I could see. So he 
has an amendment to his faculty agreement that needs to be signed. And I have it that I could send. Um, somebody might need to mute. I'm not sure who it is. Yes. So I'm ready to take down your email address. Let's see if I can find out who is talking. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh, I'm uh, very grateful to all the ideas and saving them. And uh, so it's your first okay, name, so K-E-N-L. We will get all of this out to you. And okay, I apologize for putting it's on on a feed. That burn, you know, being um, Lauren and cancer. Cancer. Okay, burn. have a thank great you. week. We'll thank send all of this out to you uh, promptly. All right. Thank you so much. All right. Bye, Bye -bye. everybody.